Hi, and welcome to my alternative reality. This week we look at parkour and piercing. I highly recommend you don't attempt these activities simultaneously. Stay tuned and enjoy the trip. I see you come to our world today. You're unaware of what we'll do or say. You come out Do you still stand by your pledge made in 2008 to provide a pony for every American? Yes, I do, sir. Free ponies for all Americans, one of the overlooked issues in America today. Parkour is the French-inspired practice of running, jumping and leaping through modern city landscapes. These urban Tarzans traverse the concrete jungle, springing from edifice to edifice gracefully. A reporter Belinda hangs with a local parkour posse and learn some tricks of her own. Hi, my name is Belinda and welcome to Maha's Alternate Reality. Today we'll be doing a segment on a very interesting physical activity that involves running, jumping, crawling, balancing, is it a plane, is it a bird, or is it Mitcha? Hi. Welcome Mitcha. Uh, we want to ask you what parkour is to you. Parkour to me is a philosophy of movement. Um, basically it's just making oneself uh, more uh, able um, is probably the best word I can use. Um, so in this regards physically able and mentally able so um, constantly pushing your boundaries um, of your physical limits um, and your fear limits so um, whether it's you know jumping off a wall onto another wall or um, even just a, a minor balance um, all of this can be uh, contributing to this uh, benefiting oneself. Awesome! Do you think it helps overcome general fears in your daily life? Yeah, definitely. Um, some of the things I've done, you know, I compare that to a situation. I'm just like, why am I scared of this? You know, why am I scared of approaching this person? Um, you know, whether it's at work or out and about when, you know, I can balance, you know, ridiculously well, uh, you know, across things or, you know, catch myself if I fall or, you know, all sorts of different things. Oh. Yeah, you can really run and catch that bus, can't you? Oh, definitely. It's come in handy a couple of times like that. <laughs> cool. So, some people believe that parkour is a philosophy, others believe it's a sport. Um, to you, is it both or does it go more for a philosophy, a form of self-development or a combination of all? I would call it more of a philosophy or a discipline rather yeah. than a sport. Um, a sport implies competition, there's a winner and a loser, and I don't think there is a loser with parkour. I think because it's not about you versus someone else, it's always about you versus you. You know, um, whether you know, it's just a, a mind game, you, you don't think you can do this, and you, you know, negative reassurances and all that kind of stuff, and then you do it and suddenly you're like, wow, you know. So um, I definitely don't think it's a sport, um, definitely more of a discipline than anything. Alright, so today we have with us Josh, who's been doing parkour for four years and we're going to ask him how did he actually start or get into parkour. Hi, I'm Josh and I've been doing parkour for about four years, a bit over. And I got started, a friend just saw it on YouTube and was like, let's give that a go. So we went out and tried out some of the techniques and that sort of thing. You started on your own, just jumping fences yeah. and rolling around. And yeah, a lot of people sort of get started that way. You can find some good sort of tutorials on YouTube and that sort of thing. And we just started with that, really. Well, we've got to see you in action because I think you're going to be pretty awesome. Um, and maybe you can, you know, try and teach me a few moves. All right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Great. Thanks heaps, John. Thanks. Well, Mitch is going to show us just a basic progression for people who are starting out and he's going to show me how to do it. Alright, so what we've got is we've got a precision jump, um, which is as complex as it sounds. Um, 
basically you're just trying to land on something precisely. So what I've got over here is a series of steps and ledges and things like that, um, which actually cater for almost all levels of parkour. But to start off with, what we're going to do is we're going to um, jump over to this step just here. And what we're aiming to get is we're aiming to get the balls of our feet, so where your toes connect with your foot, you're trying to land with that just on the edge there. Now the reason for that is because you get the most stability out of your landing. If you land too much further forward, then you're actually more prone to slipping. Um, your basic precision, so you start off feet about shoulder width apart, um, you bend your knees slightly, swing your arms up as you jump, gives you extra momentum, and then you lift your knees and then point your toes to where you want to land. So basic precision looks something like this. Awesome! Simple as that. Isn't that rocket science? What is rocket science? Rocket science is when the scientists find out things about space. <laughs> I think. You want to make a bit of money? You should do what I did. Get into farming. See this? I got this. Selling corn comes out of the fucking ground. I couldn't believe it. Okay, a progression for another technique, do you have? Um, yeah, well, for, for a different technique or a different precision jump? Different technique. Different technique. Cat pass. So cat, cat pass. pass. Mm. So cat pass basically is like... Something like that. So it's just like a forward divey kind of bring your legs through after you kind of technique. Like a catch up. Like yeah, cat like the way cats jump over stuff, like front legs first. So a good way to start with something like that would be just to cat pass onto something. So like... I can try that. Yeah. Okay, oh yeah, so you put your hands out a little bit for a start, and you want to load a bit of your weight up onto your hands, and then put your feet on behind you. Sweet. Did you click? Yeah. Alright. Okay. So then... So now we're going to try and shove a little bit on our hands, try and get... You can see you can pop your feet up a bit, so like... I'm a bit thumpy, aren't I? I'm a bit of a hippopotamus, I'm not really a cat. <laughs> yeah, the soft landing thing is going to carry through pretty, pretty much everything in parkour. Yeah, we try and land our feet softly, land our heads softly. Alright, so I think they did alright. You can show us like a progression from that. Yeah, um, once you get that, you can bring your hands back and start landing your feet further forward. So like, so you're on the other side and then go just go straight over. Great. So, what other progression or can you or technique you can show with a progression? Um, there's the roll. Yep. That can be interesting to learn for a start. Um, I generally recommend you start learning it on a hard surface, like something like that. Yep. But it does hurt if you stuff it up. Yep. <laughs> right. <laughs> for <a> start. <laughs> well, like, would you get a bruise or something? You don't um, hurt, like. Bruise. Well, you get no, you get bruises and stuff like that. Essentially, it's because you got all these bones in your back, mm. and the correct parkour roll you won't hit any of those bones yeah but most people naturally when they roll they just will because they're quite there's like quite a specific way of avoiding them yeah you can get used to putting your shoulder down so a lot of people start right down on their knees and but well, you can lead with one elbow for a start but so put your elbow down and then you just push forward into it guide your shoulder gently down to the ground yes so and then you'll come through without hitting any bones in theory I if you get that? it right, it's just a if you have a go, you might get some bruises. It, it, it won't hurt too much. It's just a somersault, sort of bit. Um, kind of almost sideways. Like it's got to go across. So, which shoulder would you land first? No idea. Right, I'd land left. So, that way? Yeah. Or, yeah. I go okay. like that. So, you land there. There's a bone there, and yeah. a bone there, and a bone in your hip as well. Okay. So you've kind of got to go across your shoulder that way. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, okay. I'm sure he's there. Sort of. Sort of. Well, so you guys then have a like a group name. Do you want to meet here? Yeah, no, nah, it's a pretty informal session on this one. It's just a training session. Um, we meet up every Monday, Thursday, and Saturday just to train and stuff. We organise it all in a Facebook group called Melbourne Parkour, I believe. Yeah. Um, so you can jump on there and find us and all the training sessions are posted up there and they're free and everyone's welcome, so. Right, and is there an association or something that parkour? Yeah, there's the Australian Parkour Association and they actually run classes which are pretty good, they've got good instructors and stuff, so. 
Yeah, they're always a good point to a good idea if you're a big complete beginner. And not yeah. teachers or anything? No, really, no. It's kind of like a group thing, so yeah, someone in the group's a bit more experienced in a certain technique, then they'll definitely help the other boys out, or girls if yeah. they're here. Um, but no, there's no teachers as such. Oh, okay. We're all students. Okay, so I had a great day learning with these guys. I was a little bit chicken with the height thing, but um, they helped me, they helped me. And a little bit of that rolling, I, I did enjoy, although I looked like a, a dead bug. <laughs> um, it was still fun, and I had a great inspiring um, experience just being with these guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed too, and you can give it a try. You can come down here during the weekend or contact them on Facebook. And um, let's see, thank you for Maha's alternate reality, and see you next week. Godfather, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. You can't act like a man! What's the matter with you? They saw you turned out a Hollywood Pinocchio that, uh, that cries like a woman? <laughs> what can I do? What can I do? What is that noise? You spend time with your family? Well, sure I do. Good. Because a man who doesn't spend time with his family can never be a real man. Okay. Come here. Huh? Oh. You look terrible. I want you to eat. I want you to rest well, and a month from now, this Hollywood Big Shot's gonna give you what you want. It's too late. They start shooting in a week. I'm gonna make him an offer he can't refuse. Bizow doo doo zoppity bop bop. Bizow doo doo zippity bop bop bop. Bizow doo doo zoppity bop bop bop. Bizow doo doo zoppity bop bop bop. Bizow doo doo zoppity bop bop. Bizow doo doo zoppity bop bop bop. So his last name is Bop Bop Bop? Or it might be Zappity Bop Zappity Bop Bop Bop. Why do people like to get their bodies pierced with holes? Sometimes in very intimate places. And then get those holes filled with studs, bars, rings and other strange objects. Our reporter Lady Erica explores this holy practice at an establishment called The Piercing Urge. I urge you to keep watching. I'm here, deep down in the dark jungle called Paran, at a very special place to find out about the ancient art of body piercing. My name is Lady Erica and I'm reporting for Maha's Alternative Reality, down at the Piercing Urge. Hi Pete. How are you, Erica? Yeah, I'm well. So, um, you're the owner of Piercing Urge. Um, how did that come about? Um, well, I've worked here since about 1992, and the opportunity to buy the business came up. So I thought, well, I've been here this long, I'm probably not going anywhere else. Why not buy? <laughs> Fantastic. Now, um, body piercing and body art um, is pretty ancient, really. I think it goes back to Egyptian times and probably beyond. When did it first become popular in Australia? Body piercing became popular in the early 90s in Melbourne. Um, some states it took a little bit longer, but not much longer. And it kind of boomed through the late 90s, early 2000s, and has kind of plateaued off since then. Um, are there any parts that you don't pierce? Uh, not really, we're a full service studio, we pierce you from head to toe basically, um, as long as it's medically safe, we won't do anything stupid. Okay, and so what's the most unusual place you've pierced? Uh, this, this isn't always an interesting question, um, it depends on what you consider unusual. You know, we do you know, dermal anchors around the eyes, we do um, the geesh piercing which is between the scrotum and the anus, we do female genital piercing, we do all sorts of things, so you know, what's unusual? We've managed to find a willing victim who will succumb to the piercer's knife. Of course it's our good friend, Maha. Hi. How are you feeling? Yeah, good. That's opportunity to uh, get a piercing, so I'll take it up here. Excellent. Okay, and so um, today you're going to have an eyebrow piercing. Yes. So how do you think it will go? What, what are you expecting? Uh, I don't know, just short, sharp pain probably, and um, 
then I'll get the kudos, I suppose. <laughs> Alright, well I'm going to leave you in Pete's capable hands and uh, we'll come back to you in a few minutes. Alright, so I'm just going to mark out where it's going to go, so it just looks straight ahead for me. This shit just got real. So those dots there are where I'm proposing we um, put the jewellery. How do you feel about that? Good, I trust you implicitly. Good call. Now I'm just going to clean you with some antiseptic because, you know, I figure you're pretty dirty. <coughs> just want to know what to expect, that's all. It's pretty quick. Um, <laughs> when was the last time you went to the doctor and had like a, a needle or a blood test? Uh, a few months ago or something. Right. right, and on a scale of 1 to 10, how did that feel? Uh, Obviously 1 being it hardly, a hardly felt thing, maybe a, a... and 10 being the worst pain I've ever experienced. Oh, okay, in that case, um, maybe a... Four. Right, so you went to the doctor and you had a needle and it was a 4 out of 10. Yeah. Right, well you just had your eyebrow pierced. Nice. What would you rate that? Oh, about a 6 to 7, maybe less. Compared to a needle, maybe a couple more points, yeah. Here's my happy in Turkish. That was nothing. <laughs> <laughs> that was so easy. No, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> I think it's more just that I don't know what to expect. Yeah, so, so how does it feel? Um, it's, it's fine, no. What, now? I can't mm. feel anything really. I don't feel the presence of it much at all. Just a bit of wetness. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty rad. Thanks, man. You're welcome. Appreciate it. It looks alright. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, it's so it cute. All, all the girls will love it. Because the only truth you know is what you get over this tube. Right now, there is a whole, an entire generation that never knew anything that didn't come out of this tube. But in terms of uh, genital, genital piercing, are there certain sorts of people that go for that more so than fashion people? I mean, is it, is it something, say, in like, the gay lesbian culture? That... That's where it started. Mm -hmm. The gay and lesbian culture um, needs to be thanked for bringing a lot of this stuff into the mainstream, especially mm -hmm. genital piercings. Um, but now, anyone you're passing on the street mm -hmm. may have a genital piercing. It's the people you least expect that have the most hardcore genital piercings. What sort of piercings do you um, perform here? Um, I do um, lobes. That was the first, you know, what I started off doing. Mm -hmm. Then moved up to some cartilage piercings, noses. I do um, lips and brats, um, nipples, nail, eyebrow. Okay. And which is your favourite part of the body's pierced? Nipples. Nipples. Why is that? I don't know. I just I. I don't know why, it's just one of my favourites. Like I love every time a nipple comes in, I'm like, oh, can I do it, can I do it? Like, I just, yeah. So, so if you're looking for a nipple piercing, this is the chick to see, <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, and so does this septum one here, does that hurt, this one? It, it's hard to say, like, I mean, everyone feels pain differently, but it's, mm. in my experience, it wasn't a particularly painful mm. piercing to do. Um, because there is what's called a little sweet spot, which is like a little spongy bit where we actually aim for me. Oh, okay. Um, so take us through, take us through some of these. Okay, the female ones. This is um, it's called a vertical clitoral hood piercing, and this is a horizontal clitoral hood piercing. Right. Um, the stimulation factor is different mm -hmm. for both of them. Um, this is a more direct stimulation because mm -hmm. you know the bottom ball sits directly on the clitoris, whereas in the horizontal, the hood sits between the oh, and, the okay. and it can be flipped up out of the way. Mm -hmm. um, we've got here the inner and outer labia piercings. Mm -hmm. So take us through the um, the stuff for the chaps. That's, yes. Um, yes. What, this looks quite an interesting 
Yes, this is two piercings, um, mm -hmm. an apodravia, which is top to bottom, and the ampling, which goes side to side. Mm -hmm. um, the more common of the male is the Prince Albert. Oh, okay. This is one so that a lot of people start off with. So this is the Prince Albert, yes. this one here? Yep. yep. Oh, it looks like Prince Albert's got a friend yes. underneath. Yes, um, that's a friend and piercing, which is another um, quite popular one like to, for beginners to start off with because it's not as invasive as, yeah. say, these ones over here. Okay, yeah. so what's the healing time on these? You know, um, generally, like, four to six weeks. It's, oh, wow. You know, we're built to really repair very quickly down there when you think about childbirth and all yeah, that sort of, of thing. So. And so with, the, with genital piercings, um, do people mainly get them for females' pleasure? Um, no, they work, they work for both. Um, well, they should work for both. Any piercing will make the area more sensitive. So something like a frenum piercing is more for the wearer than the partner because it makes that area underneath the head more sensitive. But then they can get jewellery attachments that go on that, which then help out their partner. You know, the Prince Albert, again, is in the same area, so it's making that more sensitive. Same with the Ampeline and Apodravia. So it's both people should be getting something out of the piercing. And what, we, what we've said to people in the past who have been thinking about getting genital piercing um, is, you know, buy a cheap dildo, rubber dildo, get some piercing jewellery, stick some jewellery in it, and work out what feels good for us. And so in terms of breaking um, new ground and, and the future for body art, body modification and piercing, um, where would you like to see Australia going? I would like to see more piercers in this country who actually knew what they were doing mm -hmm. and using better quality jewellery. Because oh, okay. the sad thing is in this industry there's no regulation um, regarding what we put into people. All right. mm -hmm. We can pierce people and stick rusty nails in and the government couldn't give two shits. Mm -hmm. All right. The fact of the matter is you need quality jewellery and very few places bother to sell them. If the, a lot of business owners it's like, oh wow I can buy that for five cents from that company or it's going to cost me four dollars over there. I'll buy the five cent version. All right. mm -hmm. The five cent version is crap buy good jewellery. Mm -hmm. You know, your customers long term will appreciate it. Mm -hmm. But sadly, um, for a lot of places it's just about the dollars. Okay, so we've had a really fun time here today at the Piercing Urge. Maha, how was it for you? Good, I, I feel complete. Excellent, I think you look so cool now with your little, you know, eyebrow thing going on. Um, it definitely looks better than the ring. I think you made a good choice with the bars. Thank you. So um, we've told you everything you ever wanted to know about piercing. We hope you've been enlightened today, looking at, at, at the alternative beauty industry, piercing, tattoo, body modification and art. And um, as I saw a sign in the Piercing Urge studio say, don't get screwed, get pierced. This is Lady Erica signing out for Maha's Alternative Reality. And so concludes another thrilling episode. I hope you found it inspiring. If you want to learn or see more, check out our Facebook page or YouTube channel. We'll also be premiering very soon our special alternative home viewer segment. So if there's anything remotely alternative about you or your life, get in touch via email at mahasalternativereality at gmail.com or Facebook us. And remember, let your freak flag fly. Bunch, 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 bunch